Hey everyone, today I'm going to be explaining pernicious anemia. I'll be explaining what it is, uh, how it's diagnosed, what the symptoms are, and what you should think about in terms of treatment. Okay, pernicious anemia. It is an autoimmune condition that causes you to become B12 deficient. Uh, the name just means that it's pernicious, meaning it sticks around. And kind of historically, and I'm going to gloss over this a little bit, uh, it was called pernicious because a person would be anemic, they would give them iron or B12 and they wouldn't get better, and so they called it pernicious. The reason it's pernicious, the reason it doesn't get better, is because it's an autoimmune condition. Okay, so normally uh, B12 is absorbed in your small intestine, but it can't be absorbed without this substance that's called intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is made in the lining of your stomach. So as long as your stomach is making intrinsic factor and it kind of binds to B12 in your diet or supplements, uh, B12 can be transported through your small intestine wall and be used for a variety of things, which I'll talk about in just a second. However, if your immune system is targeting intrinsic factor or targeting the cells that make intrinsic factor, well then your intrinsic factor levels are going to go down and as they go down over time, your ability to absorb B12 is going to go down and ultimately you're going to end up with B12 deficiency. Uh, what kind of symptoms would, would tell you that you have a B12 deficiency? Well, fatigue for one because B12 is a huge player in how we make energy and how we make ATP. Uh, it's used in our mitochondria. Uh, B12 is also used in a bunch of other uh, chemical and biochemical processes. Uh, it's important for neurotransmitters, it's important for myelin, uh, it's important for recycling homocysteine. So here's just kind of like some of the symptoms you can get if you have B12 deficiency. You can get some neuropathic symptoms, uh, which are symptoms like uh, numbness and tingling, kind of like you have you know, diabetic neuropathy. Uh, you can get weakness. Uh, if it's super severe, you can get uh, demyelinating signs, which means you can get uh, uh, signs and symptoms that make you think you might have multiple sclerosis, like super uh, weakness in an arm or like your limbs feel dead. Uh, fatigue is a big one. Uh, you can also lead to changes in uh, the skin around your mouth and your lips. So those are the symptoms, right? Now, the diagnosis of pernicious uh, anemia is made through some blood tests. And you can either get, uh, these are antibody tests, and you can get what's called intrinsic factor antibody test, or you can get what's called gastric parietal cell antibody test. Now the gastric parietal cells are those cells in the stomach that make the intrinsic factor. And intrinsic factor is the stuff that they make. So remember, if your immune system is making you know, antibodies, uh, which are like little post-it notes, if it's making antibodies to stick onto either one of those things, and it makes a lot of them, then your immune system goes after them and tries to kill it. That's kind of the definition of an autoimmune problem. And so those two tests are the tests that will tell you if you've got the antibodies, if you've got the autoimmune uh, mechanism happening. Now, B12 as a, as a substance, how do you determine if your B12 is low, right? Because we talked about pernicious anemia. So the anemia part of it is your red blood cells are low, hemoglobin's low, or hematocrit is low, any one of those three. The pernicious part of it is the autoimmune nature of it, and that is tested with intrinsic factor antibodies or gast and or gastric parietal cell antibodies. And then you still got to know <clears throat> what your B12 doing, right? Because it's possible to have those antibodies uh, and not have B12 that's low. So how do you really find out if your B12 levels are low? Well, this will be a little bit confusing or maybe a little surprising, but the blood test that you can order from Quest or LabCorp or whoever that says vitamin B12 serum is not a very good B12 test. It's uh, got a few technical issues and it can misrepresent whether your B12 is high or B12 is low or B12 is normal. So long story short, the test you want to do is called a methylmalonic acid, either through blood or urine. That is a much, much better test to find out if your B12 levels are actually low or not, especially in this condition, okay? So remember a second ago I said that in uh, per, uh, pernicious anemia, you can get intrinsic factor antibodies. Okay, here's the problem with that. If your doctor doesn't know the thing I'm about to tell you, you got to watch out. So the lab test, LabCorp and Quest do, and, and some other tests, the way that it tests B12, the machine, uh, the machine can't tell the difference between whether what it's seeing in your blood is actual B12 or if it's seeing intrinsic factor antibodies. So I bet you can understand what the uh, problem is there, right? The machine can 
accidentally or mistakenly count your intrinsic factor antibodies as B12, and that would be false. And so your B12 could look normal or even high, even though it's not. Now what that's called is that's called a spurious or false elevation in B12. And I can't say I thought of that. Uh, several years ago, um, if, if you'd asked me 15 years ago or 20 years ago, if what high B12 meant on someone's blood test, I'd say, I don't know, probably not much, right? But high B12 on a blood test can actually be telling you that the person has high intrinsic factor antibodies. So running a regular B12 test on someone that we know has pernicious anemia is not very useful at all. So I hope you are working with someone who understands that last like minute and a half that I told you, right? Because otherwise you're going to waste a lot of time and you could potentially um, be wasting time that you could use to recover. Okay, so pernicious anemia, autoimmune condition, intrinsic factor antibodies, or gastric parietal cell antibodies. Now, one of the symptoms I didn't mention, uh, if you've got gastric parietal cell antibodies, you can end up with kind of constant, uh, like, heartburn or stomach burn feeling, which I have had a few patients with that. Uh, and that is really unpleasant, very unfun. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to take uh, Zantac or Pepsid. Uh, it means, especially in the context of other clues about autoimmune stuff, that you need to get checked if you have, see if you have those antibodies. All right, so we've talked about kind of the symptoms that pernicious anemia causes. We ca talked about, um, you know, the testing for it. Uh, what about the treatment? Well, when someone's got so little intrinsic factor left that they can't get B12 absorbed, they're probably going to have to get B12 injections, which is not the end of the world, right? That's a whole other topic, but it's a relatively easy thing to do. Uh, I'm not going to go into, like, you know, the injection schedule and that kind of stuff, because that's sort of beyond the scope of today. But some people can still absorb B12 if they take a lot of it uh, sublingually. There is a little bit of evidence to show that in people that have intrinsic factor antibodies, uh, they don't have to get B12 injections. But I'll just tell you, most people that I've seen over the last 20 years in my practice are probably going to have to get injections at some point. But just like a lot of other autoimmune conditions, that is only the beginning. It's just like in Hashimoto's where you've got an autoimmune problem that's attacking your thyroid, destroys your ability to make thyroid hormones, so you have to take thyroid hormones. Same thing here. You have an autoimmune condition that's destroying your ability to absorb B12, so you're going to have to get B12 in some other way. But now we have to see what can we do to slow this down. Because with any autoimmune problem, I hope you're listening carefully, with any autoimmune problem, it's very easy to get more. So once you've got one autoimmune problem, it's very easy to get another one, like Hashimoto's, or rheumatoid arthritis, or type 1 diabetes, or vitiligo, or alopecia areata. So the doctor you're working with, I hope, has enough uh, presence of mind, enough experience to realize that you've got one autoimmune problem, we need to be proactive to do things to prevent additional autoimmune problems. Now, that comes down to looking at specific diet things you can do. I've got a lot of videos on that you can look up. It also comes down to doing things to regulate and uh, modulate, is the word we'd use, your immune system. And to know how to do that, you need to get your immune system fingerprint, right? Or what we call your immunophenotype, which is really just saying, hey, Yes, you have pernicious anemia, but what does your flavor of pernicious anemia look like? Now, I guess I'll probably need to do a separate video on what that means, but what we're looking at is CD4 cells and CD8 cells and Th1 and Th2 and Th17 and finding out, hey, where in you are those exact imbalances? So I don't want to get too deep into that, so let me just kind of summarize. Pernicious anemia can cause most commonly symptoms of fatigue, uh, neuropathic symptoms like numbness, tingling. It can also cause brain frog and depression because of its impact on neurotransmitters. It can cause changes in uh, the nails and some of the skin on your tongue and around your mouth. It's tested by uh, intrinsic factor antibodies and gastric parietal cell antibodies. You need to get both. Uh, the B12 side of things really should be looked at with a methylmalonic acid uh, and or like a homocysteine, which I guess I should have talked about that, but I don't have time. <laughs> so anyway, uh, make sure that you're working with a doctor that understands that whole picture. Because if you're not, uh, you could be setting yourself up for further autoimmune conditions, further autoimmune damage, uh, and some of it could be permanent. Okay, I'll see you next time.